welcome to railways online um, I just thought I'd do a quick run on my track and setup and give you a quick uh, rundown of why I've done what I've done um, I actually have done a few uh, a different map and then just completely gave up because I learnt a lot of stuff along the way so um, this is my uh, lumberyard I like, for, like coming through um, upline in this direction and I'll explain that in a minute. I am Australian, so for me, um, the side of the road um, is different to the rest of the world, or where we drive on the left-hand side, um, but you'll see I'm running rail on the right-hand side, and that's to do with how I can easily make a loop um, and use two lines. So coming around here, um, you saw that I had a siding that runs up into the core wood, so from a core wood point of view, um, I can choose which uh, goods I'm going to collect. And down here is where that selection is made. So that switch there runs in both directions, but you can see it's on a separate line. So I've just done some uh, corner work and that sort of stuff, kept it all level here. So I could then do a um, track switching uh, setup here. So I can change lines if I want to. So um, if I wanted to, I could make my downline or upline in a different direction. So the track has all been laid on trestle, and the reason for that is the trestle can hold two tracks uh, side by side uh, without too much trouble from a geometry point of view. It all works out fairly well. You can just follow the um, outside edges of the timber work to get your track pretty good. Um, I did a quick video on how to make it all a bit better, so some of this I can tidy up later now that I've learned a few more techniques. Um, but the track has all been laid, um, you know, one degree down slope or thereabouts, um, and it's set up so I can run flat out. You can see here I got nice long uh, curves. I know other people like to make a windy track, follow the hillside, all that kind of stuff. But this track was laid from the very top of over there to around about um, where it straightens out again in one piece so if you can continue your track work without using the right mouse and boarding and stopping your track it will lay as one continuous piece and then you can use your up down uh, functionality on the angle and re-angle the entire line in one go so if you um, you know like here it's easy to walk around on the ground um, so I was able to get you know fairly close to what I wanted and just work out up down you know, angles, that sort of stuff. So here I'm coming into the lumber mill, and here's where my track gets completely crazy compared to what most people would do as a correct uh, track. So first of all, I'm crossing over my loop, and what that does is it means I can get inside to the lake without being interfered with from uh, any other way, and it means that the loop for the um, lumber yard uh, can run separately as well. So you can see here what I've done is um, that's the line that runs out towards the, um, the smelter and it runs back to the main depot. So I'll just stop here on the train. Let's get some brakes going. Not too hard. Make sure we're in the right spot. Just trying to check the back of the car. I'll put the brakes on. Now what I'll do is I'll give you a quick tour of this switch work here. Now the reason to do it like this is um, I can bypass, um, I can use the loop to send my trains through into that direction um, relatively easy. And by having the switches close together, it means when I'm trying to pull a train through this section, I can run around, flick all the switches and don't have to try and stop start a train because the switches are so far apart um, and I, it makes it a lot easier to operate it doesn't it's not um, you know proper meta for railways it's not modeling or any of that sort of stuff but from a single player point of view um, when you're doing it all on your own it makes doing some of the switches a lot easier because I can get to this section choose the up line choose the down line choose where I'm going the other way and have it all set up pretty quickly without any having any trouble now from efficiency point of view, I've topped up the water 
and I was running a um, full tank of, uh, sorry, a full uh, handful of wood. And you can see there I had a little bit of um, fire, power, uh, fire left over. So we're just going to shoot ourselves um, straight back up to the other camp. And we'll give you a tour of the mill as we go past. So it is just the loop with um, switching to go into the uh, lumber area of the mill. This loop is designed to travel in this direction, but it does work in the other way. And the reason why um, like the lumber doesn't have to head up to the camp, so it doesn't have a line that leads to the camp. I don't have a, a loop to do that. So that loop, if I'm running the lumber and beams out to the, um, the iron mine, I can set all my switches and just do that loop as many times as I like. Um, I'm running a short train because it's quicker on loading. Um, uh, yeah, so you can see here we're doing a loop, we're just at six minutes. Um, it's lazy for me, I can use the regulator on full and the brake on zero and just let the train took along. The only action I need to take is the um, stopping at the, the actual loading zone and putting uh, water in. And because it's at the logging camp, I've got uh, my firewood depot right there, so I can actually load logs um, using the car directly into the logging camp, so I can always get fuel easily whenever I'm thinking I need a top up and I always um, fill the firebox for the train uh, from the lumber mill, uh, sorry, from the, uh, from the firewood depot before I leave. So I'm running a full tender of wood and a full tank of water before I leave the wood zone. So when you're up there, you've got plenty of time for loading, um, get all that done. So I uh, hope this is a, gives you an idea of the why I've laid the track this way. I know it's not railway meta in the fact that two trains cannot pass on this section of track. So in multiplayer mode, you could have collisions and that sort of stuff. But in single player mode, um, I won't get collisions, so I can lay my tracks close together. And all I've done is just added those features that make it possible to make choices about what you're gonna do. So whether I'm running up or down track, is the choice I can make. Get the train over one track, reset the switches, keep it all straight again, and I'm good to go. I only have to do it once in a while. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm running the trains, for me, uh, as easy as possible, and not true to the whole um, model railway, per se. It's more of a, um, you know, doing what we need to do in the railway game, but making it um, relatively easy. So here's my full loop, just coming in to collect the firewood. So what I'm trying to get to is that second car lined up with the edge of the um, platform here. So you want that lined up there. So this crane, guess where it loads? Not car three, but car two. So it means from lining up, loading, um, I don't have to worry about an odd car being in between the cranes. I can actually load the two cars together. Um, yeah, do them side by side, do it fairly quickly, and have minimal fuss. So all I need to do is reposition my crane, uh, train again, and get the very last car lined up in the same spot and we're ready to go for loading um, hope you enjoyed this simple video um, catch you guys later